Job for the day, let's take the starboard engine out, see if we can easily fit all of the cable through and then do the same for the port engine, hopefully while it's in the water, otherwise a lot more work. Don't take a chance, will you let me ride? I could be the best thing in your life. Maybe let's take a drive, take a drive. You can't actually do it while they are in the water because you need to remove the entire side of the engine, um, which is not possible in the water. So that means that we have to take them out to plug everything and then take them back in, which on starboard side, it's gonna work as easily as this. I mean, it's never easy, so fingers crossed it does. But on port side, it's quite more complex because the throttle and the shift cables are not long enough. So that means that we need to reopen the entire control box. Throttle and gear cable plus the control cable from the control box all have to go through that tiny holes there. So we have to remove that bit, but because they changed the model, now to remove that bit you have to remove the whole side, <laughs> which is nice when the engine is down below. So you're gonna have to remove everything from here, remove the rubber here and here, and see what we can do. Let's do it. We have four bolts to undo. Two at the top, one in the middle, and one in the bottom. We're not exactly taking the side away. We're just removing the bolts so that we can get a bit of space in there um, and fit through the cables. It's quite difficult for us to film right now because, well, we're holding an engine, so, you know, resetting the camera and everything is basically impossible. But hopefully you'll see a bit better on the second engine. I'm very stressed, very, very stressed. We have the engine in, everything is plugged in, I mean, I think. <laughs> and now we are just about to turn it on for the first time. Finger cross, it works straight away. It never does, but. Now, I just turn it on for the first time. It works! Yes! I'm so happy. For the second engine, we decided to give it a go and try to do all of that while the engine is in the water because we've seen how it's done and where the cables are supposed to go on the first one. So yeah, back on the kayak for me and um, let's give it a go. Okay, still very difficult for me to show you, but let me explain. The throttle and shift cables have to be locked in position so they come through a clip. These clips can only be lifted up if the side of the engine is not tight, hence why we have to remove those bolts. Once the cables are in position, we can screw on the connectors and attach them to the relevant part in the engine. Well, easier said than done, one on a kayak. Testing the second engine. We've um, plugged everything and now the test. Did we take it out of the water? Nope. We managed to do it while in the water and it was actually easier the way we've done it. Maybe because we are in the marina and um, there's, no, there's no movement, but it was all right. All right, let's get this baby fired up. Looks like it's working. Let's have a look. Sure. 
one of the last things that we need to do is uh, plug those uh, tachometers. So these are the instruments that tell us the number of uh, RPM on the engines. And they also give us like the number of hours, but because we can't reset that to zero, we're not really gonna be able to trust that. But we all we really want is the, the RPM, so that's fine. Um, so it's not gonna be as simple as plug and play because these are generics. Uh, they're not too hard to use, so the, the literature is not quite clear as to which cable goes where. From the tachometers, we get three cables, um, so black, yellow, and green. One is for ground, and the other two are for, are for ignition and send. And from the control box, we get four. We're just going to need to do a few, run a few tests to see which one goes where. The only thing that we know for sure is both blacks are for ground, so they need to be plugged together. And the little bit of the issue with that is that we have two females, so we need to convert this one into a male first. From the literature, we've identified that the red cable needs to be plugged to ignition and we didn't know between white and green. Turns out nothing happens on the tachometer when you plug the green, so we knew we needed to plug the white. So we're gonna plug the tachometer to the engine and to make sure everything is right, we're gonna measure the output of the engine, so the frequency, and then we're gonna make sure it is the right RPM. So for that, it's quite simple, let's do some math. We have the frequency in Hertz. So the frequency is actually the number of cycles per second. So if we multiply this by 60, we have per minute. And if we divide by the number of cycles, we should get our RPM. To get the number of cycles, we have a look into the documentation of the engine. And it's telling us that we have 10, 12 poles per engine. And each pole being the negative and the positive of the cycles. You just divide the number of poles by two and you have the number of cycles. So you get Hertz by 60 divided by number of poles divided by two. Looks complex, but if you take a look at the number of poles, it's 12, so divided by two is six. So we have Hertz by 60 divided by six, and we can simplify the six. And to get the right RPM, it's just the number of Hertz multiply by 10. Now let's see if it's that easy when we actually do the measurements, but it should be simple. So let's go ahead and do that. Okay, so now we have 95 Hertz um, at the readings. So we're gonna try and plug the tachometer and see if we have around 1000 RPM. Um, and if we do, I mean, it's correct. So let's give it a go. All right, so black one and the black one. And the green with the white. Yeah, for sure. And we have 1000 RPM. So let's give it a little bit of a throttle. Let's say to 2000. All right. A little bit over, or maybe two and a half. So now let's see the readings. So we are a little bit over two and a half, which makes sense. So yeah, it's working and it's uh, adapted to it. So um, yeah, good to go. Last but not least, we need to do the braking of the engine. The mechanic has already done the first two steps. So now we need to do the rest. So we are testing the new engines. So let me quickly show you. We are gonna go like 15 nautical miles, so two hours something. Let's see how powerful they are. Um, just to test them out. For one hour, we're gonna have to let them run around 3,000 something RPM. And after that, for seven hours, we're gonna have to be three quarter of the full throttle, which is around 4,000. And after that, good to go. So we'll see for the first hour how it goes 
and yeah I can already see we are doing six knots and a half and we are only at 3000 rpm which is what we wanted we are going so fast it's too fast <laughs> I love those engines they are really good we are almost going into the wind and there's uh, 20 knots of wind it's not easy and we are flying through it while we are on the go, we might as well try to catch something, right? The decision to go on the reef was good on paper because that was the best weather we have seen for the last month but it's not good enough for sure so yeah we didn't sleep much um, because there's like 20 to 25 knots of wind we don't have much protection from the from the wind because the island next to us is green island which is very small and the reef is also not too big so um we have waves and yeah the boat is moving a lot so um didn't spend a good night for sure i think our time on the reef <laughs> is done for the week we're gonna head off and come back to cairns so we can rest and figure um a few things out um third thing is a better window to go out on the reef. Another one is the engine. They were very good for the top hand speed, but um, it's not moving the, the boat as much as we would like to. So we're gonna have to change the propellers because we need high thrust ones. Because yesterday with the wind and the current, I couldn't really handle the boat very well. So we struggled to get the buoy. So yeah, we're gonna um, try and get some new ones. Another thing we have to figure out are the trampolines. Cecil was just trying to get the buoy and she went through the trampolines. So she had both legs in the water, was barely hanging on the boat. So that was pretty sketchy. That's us for this week. Okay, time to leave this windy anchorage and get back to the coasting cairns. Clearly coming on to us. So, uh, the engines are working very well. Too well, actually, because it's charging the, the batteries. But I don't think we have protection to not overcharge the batteries because of the engines because the previous ones were not charging much so that was not an issue those ones are I think it's 12 amps per engine so we were already full when we left and they actually overcharged a little bit the batteries so um, we're gonna have to take a look at that 
for those of you who were wondering, here's the comparison between the old and the new. These numbers are for the Yamaha High Trust, whereas the Toatsu, we have the three blades props at the moment. So the weight is not that different, 45 kilos for the 9.9 .9 Yamaha and 49.5 for the 20 Tohatsu. The Yamaha were a bit more compact with a total length under a meter compared to 1 meter 368 for the Tohatsu. The top speed when running one engine only used to be at 4.5 knots for the Yamaha and it's now at 7 knots for the Tohatsu. All of that for a fuel consumption of uh, 275 liters an hour versus 325. That being said, we don't really like the acceleration of the three blades prop, especially in reverse because the boat isn't very reactive, so quite difficult to fully control when docking or trying to avoid a bomi or something like that. So we will be swapping for the high trust props, which uh, for sure will reduce our top speed. Most likely we will be closer to 6 knots, but we will keep you posted in further videos. If you like this one, don't forget to let us know and make sure to subscribe. See you next time. Bye.